Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our full review of the Nike Vomero 17. The Vomero 17 is a cushion shoe within Nike's lineup. It's a big stack shoe that sits alongside things like the Invincible Infinity as a cushioned option primarily for easy and long runs, but it is a pretty versatile daily training option as well. It's going to be available in the autumn of this year. Uh, it costs $160. Don't have the confirmed UK price yet for the Vomero 17. It's got a high stack height that hits around 40 millimeters. We haven't got that exactly confirmed, but it does have a drop of 10 millimeters and it weighs in at 303 grams or 10.7 ounces in my UK size nine. The exciting thing about the Vomero is it's got some Zoom X foam in the midsole, which is Nike's best foam. It's a Piva based foam and you've got a top layer of it within the Vomero over a layer of Cushlon 3.0. This is an EVA foam uh, that's a little bit firmer, more durable than the Zumax foam on top. To create that chill density effect, you've got that softer, bouncier top layer with a firmer, more durable layer beneath. Got engineered mesh upper with lots of padding around the heel and tongue of the shoe, and then an internal heel counter, plus sidles of foam on the midsole to add some stability to it. We've got a waffle tread outsole, similar to ones on other Nike shoes, pretty full coverage there, and a fairly thick layer of rubber, so it should be nice and durable. When it comes to fit, I ran in a UK eight and a half in the Vomero, and for me, the fit was pretty much spot on. Good hold in the heel, from all that ample padding that you've got, you've got a good lockdown, just about enough room in the toe box and width in the forefoot, and I'd recommend going true to size in these. I found that the Vomero 17 fit me well in my normal running shoe size. I usually use a UK 9, and this is a UK 9, which for Nike equates to a US 10. Same size I have in all Nike shoes, uh, the Pegasus, the Invincible, the Vaporfly, and it fits me really well. No concerns about the amount of room I have in the toe box and a good hold around the heel and midfoot. Only thing I really have noted about the upper is it is quite a warm upper. It's been quite muggy lately in the UK, and I do find that my shoe runs a little bit hotter in this shoe than some others. It's not a big problem, but if you're someone who tends to get annoyed by that, it might be something to look out for a little bit with the Vomero 70. So I've not tested the Vomero in the past, but I am pretty familiar with all of Nike's other cushion shoes. And it's fair to say that 2023 has been a slightly disappointing year for those cushion shoes. The Invincible 3 lost a little bit of the fun and didn't really add anything with the third generation, in my opinion. I don't really like that shoe anywhere near as much as I like the Invincible 2. The Infinity 4, which we've been testing just a little bit recently, is really heavy. And again, I don't really like that shoe compared to previous versions of the Infinity. And the Pegasus 40 is fine. It's a good solid shoe still, but it was very similar to the Pegasus 39 and a little bit heavier, so I probably still prefer the Pegasus 39. But the Pegasus 40 is a good shoe. I'll let that one off a bit. But luckily, the Vomero 17 has come to save the day anyway, because this is a really good cushion shoe and one that I've really enjoyed using uh, over the past couple of weeks. So the dual density midsole is the star of the show here. It creates a ride that is soft without being squishy. You've got a little bit of bounce from the Zoom X there, but overall it's quite a stable feeling shoe that is certainly soft underfoot and very comfortable, but it doesn't collapse underneath you. It's not wobbly. You really does feel quite like the Pegasus in terms of the geometry and the way you snap through, but just a fair bit softer than the Pegasus with its React foam with those Air Zoom pods in it. Uh, I really like the shoe for easy runs, which is what it's mainly designed for, and I've done one 15 mile long run in it as well. And yeah, it's just a really nice shoe to tick along in. It's, it's not that heavy, but also feels probably a little bit less heavy than that. And actually, when you do want to up the pace a little bit on those kind of general daily training runs, when you're picking up more towards steady pace rather than really going for it, it feels very easy to do that in this shoe. It rolls through nicely, a little bit of bounce from the Zoom X. In general, it's just quite a nice, well-balanced cushion shoe, I'd say. And given that the stack height is high, you know, it is hitting up towards 40 millimeters there. It doesn't feel at all like that underfoot. It actually does still feel quite like the Pegasus in terms of stack height, even if it is a lot softer than the Pegasus. I have done one progression run in the shoe where I started at an easy pace and pushed towards some fast stuff at the end, ticking along at around a kind of 340, 345 a K for a bit. And it feels pretty comfortable in the shoe. Like it's not really built for that, but at the same time, I think this, as cushion shoes go, I think this is a good versatile option. If you're someone who likes a cushion daily trainer, does all their runs in something like the Socony Triumph, then this is another shoe to consider, I'd say, because it does have that level of versatility whilst being primarily very comfortable for those easy runs. Outsole has been pretty good for me as well, like it, a little bit slick at the start. I think it's roughed up a little bit after one run and it's been okay on wet pavements. Uh, it's, it's pretty solid outsole. It's very similar to what you get from the Pegasus all round. I do think it's gonna be nice and durable. 
Upper, like I said, in the fit section, does run a little bit warm, but overall is pretty comfortable. It's a nice shoe for just wandering around it. I actually took it on holiday and just used it as my main walking around shoe all week. And then it does have the benefit, obviously, of being quite a solid and versatile running shoe all round. So yeah, it was really a pleasant surprise, actually, because like I say, Nike hasn't been smashing the cushion shoe category this year, in my opinion. But this is a really good shoe that I think will appeal to lots of people. It's not the liveliest shoe in the world. Like I wouldn't say, look at the Zoom X Foam in this and start thinking, oh, this is going to be really explosive, really fun. It isn't that. Like the Invincible probably still has a little bit more bounce to it but it also has the wobbliness and the annoying upper and this is just a much nicer experience to run in than the Invincible in my opinion because of that firmer layer underneath which I think balances out the ride a little bit to make it more suitable for lots of people like there's enough stability there I think that most people will get on the shoe quite well but it is soft and comfortable underfoot for sure. The only thing I think it differs to some other shoes on the market in this stacker it's not really a very rocket ride for me like you get a bit more snap coming through which is similar to the Pegasus which is why I do feel like it does have a similar ride to the Pegasus in many ways but so that might be something that people might notice like I tend to prefer a rocket shoe myself and overall do slightly prefer shoes that have that but this is still a very comfortable ride all round and one I think lots of people will like. So for my run test I've done around 50 kilometers in the Vomero 17 those are mostly easy miles I've done some faster miles pushing kind of tempo pace that's been on road with some light river and park paths thrown in to test the stability now this is a shoe I think that's grown on me the more that I've run in it and as a plush neutral trainer I think it's got merit for the longer easier stuff there's plenty of impact protection coming up from the midsole foam combo, the two foams that you've got in there. You get soft landings and they do sink a little, but I think the Zoom X, it does come back and adds a little bit of liveliness as well. And with that Cushlon 3.0, you keep things kind of nice and stable. And the combo I think can make this a really good option if you're a runner with a heavier build. But I've definitely got this firmly in the plotter category. And if you found the Invincible 3 or the Nike Infinity 4, just too much shoe, too heavy, too clunky, I think this hybrid dual foam Vomero might actually be a good alternative to look at for those long, slow, easy miles. It's still relatively heavy, but it does strip things back a bit compared to those shoes. It's not as overdone as some others in that easy category. But there's still too much shoe here for me to want to pick it up for faster efforts. I just find it a little bit overall, it's a little bit dense, a little bit heavy. And although Nike says it's made the uppers more breathable, I didn't really feel that. I think they're still quite dense and they did get a little bit hot, you know, it's sort of summer here. I don't really tend to notice that in uppers, but these I did. I'd put this shoe quite close to something like the On Cloud Monster for its use case. Though I think the rocker in the Mount Monster helps it cope better when you want to think, tick things up a bit faster. Uh, it really didn't work for me on the faster miles of Amero. I prefer something lighter and you know it's quite a way off something like the Endorphin Speed 3 and the slew of new super trainers that we've got that are bringing really good versatility. But other plus points for this shoe, I think the grip was good, it's built well, it has all the hallmarks of a shoe that I think will endure well as well. So there are merits here, it's just maybe not a wow shoe. My verdict then, well first up I have to say I really love the colours, there's something really nice and retro and kind of Nike about the design, that's a, that's, a, that's a tick of the box for me. But then when it comes to the performance I found it a little bit of a mixed bag. It was good for the slow and easy but I found it lacking for the higher tempo stuff. It's too heavy on my book and it didn't really have that top end response that we get with some other day trainers, even with that bit of Zoom X foam in there. And that lack of versatility makes it a hard one to recommend, I think, over the other really good all-rounders that are coming into this space. There's some really seriously good shoes occupying this area and at this price point or even cheaper. Now, this is another shoe, basically, that I thought was okay. I was happy to run in it, but I didn't fall in love with it. If you're a Vomero fan, this is probably an improvement. If you're a fan of lighter and clippier daily trainers, I'm not sure this is gonna be for you. I think it might be a little bit too much shoe. If you're looking for a shoe that's good for logging easy miles in nice plush comfort with a little bit of pop, decent amount of softness and some good stability, then maybe this is worth a look. But for me, there are other shoes I personally look at first, including the Mac 5, the Cloud Monster as well, as I mentioned. The Speed 3 has masses of versatility in there. Maybe even something like the Saucony Triumph 21 might do a better job. Yeah, so that's me on the Nike Vomero 17. So I'm a big fan of the Nike Vomero 17. I think it's a really solid cushion shoe all round, a little bit of versatility there. But overall, the comfort is the main feature you get from it. It's a really nice option for pootling around in with that well-balanced ride that's soft without being squishy or wobbly and just have a little bit of bounce there if you do want to up the pace towards the end of your run or do something like that. 
think if you're building a running shoe rotation, it's a shoe that will fit in as the easy and cushioned shoe within that rotation alongside faster options. But if you are someone who likes to just use one shoe and you like a cushioned daily trainer, then I think it is a strong option. It's reasonably versatile, like I say. It's not an all out express shoe, but it does have enough pace there that you can use it for a little bit of everything. I think it's my favorite option within Nike's range of cushioned shoes. I think it's certainly better than the Invincible and the Infinity just on ride feel, stability, comfort, everything. I just prefer it to those shoes. With the Pegasus, uh, you're getting probably a similar level of performance, but this is a softer shoe, a more enjoyable shoe to run around in, I'd say. But the Pegasus is a fair bit cheaper, so there is that to consider. And with a React midsole, you're probably going to get more durability from the Pegasus as well. But yeah, I prefer the feel of the Vomero underfoot if you're not worried about the price difference between the two shoes. And on the market at large, I think it is one of the stronger cushion daily trainers in terms of the versatility you get here and the comfort, it does equate to things like the Triumph 21 for me, which I've just started testing, or you know, Brooks Glycerin 20. Those like, big, very well cushioned shoes, but they do still work well for daily training because of the balance in the midsole. It's not just completely geared to be a max cushioned cruiser, like something like the New Balance Small V4, which is a nice shoe, but I think doesn't really have any versatility to it. But I do think the Vomero has a little bit. But like I said in the run test, I'd probably steer towards slightly rocket shoes myself, slightly smoother riding shoes, something like the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. I really enjoy for those properties, but if you like that slightly more traditional ride, then the Vomero 17 has it with the addition of that modern super foam there in the midsole, just to give you a little bit more comfort and bounce under foot than you get from some of those other cushion shoes out there. So all in all, really enjoyed using the Vomero 17. I didn't use the previous version, so I can't con comment on how much of an upgrade or downgrade it is from that shoe, but certainly this is a good shoe, and I think the pick of Nike's cushion shoes in 2023. So that's our review of the Nike Vomero 17. Feel free to jump into the comments to let us know what you think about the shoe. Please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.